Welcome to this very important video on evaluating restorative justice in your school and monitoring your implementation fidelity. I'm Dr. Martha Brown, author of Creating Restorative Schools, Setting Schools Up to Succeed. I'm also a member of the American Evaluation Association, Minnesota Evaluation Association, Canadian Evaluation Society, and the Visitor Studies Association. Evaluation is what I do. I want to start, as I have in other videos, with referencing this very important report by Kathy Evans and Ann Gregory. Once again, I encourage you to download and read this report as it talks about misimplementation models. The report ends with some recommendations, and I'm building this talk today on three of the recommendations made in the report. And the first is to employ a strategic rollout. We're going to talk a little bit about this today in terms of planning. Evaluation and monitoring also support the creation of long-term implementation plans because you've got to pay attention to what's going on and make course adjustments along the way. And their last recommendation is to invest right up front in long-term, they call it research, I'm going to call it evaluation. And this is the work that you can do by working with internal evaluators from your school district, external evaluators like me. More and more schools need to be evaluating and monitoring their implementation, and that's what this video is about, to help I'm borrowing a quote by one of my heroes, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, right now. My role in the restorative justice movement is really to help schools get ready, and see my video on readiness assessments about that, but also to support schools and districts as they monitor implementation fidelity and progress towards the outcomes of restorative justice. Right off the bat, I want to just address my use of the term program. I'm using it here more out of convenience because in the world of evaluation, we talk about program evaluation. But RJE is more than a program. I recognize that. It is a way of being and a way of doing school. But becoming restorative involves change. And change requires new ways of thinking. Restorative justice requires new ways of thinking. We have new ways of being, new ways of teaching, and new ways to support struggling students because we're moving away from punishing students who are struggling and supporting them instead. We're talking about change, whole school change, and change can be planned, mapped, rethought, reflected upon, and evaluated. Now these are my very strong opinions, but RJE can and should be evaluated. RJE training can and should be evaluated, and this is certainly not happening nearly enough. Finally, implementation can and should be evaluated, and again, not enough of this is happening either. I'm hoping after you watch this video you're thinking a little bit more about all of these things. I would like to start with some evaluation basics and recognize the fact that evaluation could be a trigger word in schools because oftentimes it is used to punish teachers. But we're going to put a different spin on evaluation today because this is nothing punitive. We'll define evaluation as a systematic method for collecting, analyzing, and using information that sometimes we call data to evaluate or improve a program and because RJE is not a program and shouldn't be looked at that way, I've added or a change initiative. So let's look at RJE as a change initiative. Keywords here, evaluation systematic. We collect, analyze, and use information. Those are key words. We evaluate so that we can use that information to improve. So let's look at a few things that evaluation is. Again, systematic process. It's not willy-nilly. It's a systematic process of asking questions, then collecting and using the answers, here we have that word use again, to measure your program progress. How are you doing? Are things going the way you want them to? Are we heading towards our goals? No, that's okay. Let's figure out what's going wrong and identify areas that we need to improve. It's also an opportunity to fine tune decisions and look at our goals. Are they realistic? Course adjustments are okay. One of the things evaluation may show up is that staff and volunteers need more professional development and training or different kinds. 
It's also a way to be accountable and credible to your stakeholders. We'll talk about stakeholders in a minute, but at the end of the day, the students are the most important stakeholder in your school. It also will help you guide budget and resource allocation. RJE does take money and this helps you know where to spend that, how much you'll need. Finally, evaluation can help you be a more effective school that's working toward your mission. Here's what it's not. Okay, it's not a test that you pass or fail. It is not something you do to promote yourself. Woohoo, we did an evaluation. Yay, look at us. It's not that, okay? And it's not a scientific research project. This is more about monitoring your progress toward your goals, using evaluation as a tool to inform decision making. It's also not something you do every five years because it's fun, nor is it something you do once. Evaluation should be an ongoing, built-in part of your change initiative, and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. So let's talk about how to plan an evaluation. You want to have a clear purpose for your evaluation. Again, this is not willy-nilly. There is a reason why you're doing that, and that needs to be very clearly defined. And these are usually linked to your evaluation questions. These are the questions you're asking that you want to address through the evaluation, and of course, they're linked to your outcomes. Think about how you will use the findings of the evaluation. Again, you're not doing this because it's fun, even though I think evaluation is fun. You're doing this because you want information that is going to inform decision making. How are you linking the things that you're doing to the goals and outcomes that you want to achieve? And what resources do you have to conduct the evaluation? And this is where a lot of schools get hung up and why they don't do it so much. This is when you might want to consider using an external evaluator. Also, take into consideration the political climate around your evaluation and who your stakeholders are. There are a lot of things at stake when we start talking about restorative justice, school safety, there's a lot of emotion tied to these, so take those into consideration as well and bring people into the process. Okay, so we've talked about stakeholders. Stakeholders are simply anyone who has some skin in the game, who cares about the school, who cares about you and this initiative. Policymakers, these are folks at the state, they could be federal, they could also be your school board members. They could also be your local council people. They could be your mayors. Think about who your policymakers are. Obviously, the administrators in the school and administrators in the district. Practitioners, trainers, people who are doing restorative justice. You folks, you folks are practitioners if you're doing this work. All of the adults in the school, notice I didn't say teachers here. All of the adults in the school are stakeholders. All of the students are also stakeholders. Parents, yes, neighbors, community members, absolutely, partners and volunteers. The people who come into your school with different supportive programs, mentoring, volunteering, PTA, PTO, all of those types of partnerships are stakeholders. If there is anybody funding specific aspects or specific programs or initiatives in your school, they've got a stake in this game. Research and evaluators, we do too. And this list is not complete, so take a few minutes to sit with your folks and think about who is missing off this list. So this is not an instructional video on logic modeling and program theory, but I do want to take a minute to talk about this. It is so important for planning and implementation that you map out where you are what resources you've got, what you're going to do, and what outcomes you want. The logic model process takes you through each of those steps. Along the bottom of this slide, you see some evaluation types, and you can see that there are different types of evaluation that occur at different steps of these processes. And I'm gonna talk more about that. So ask yourself from the outset, what are your intended outcomes? What are your goals? And work backward from there. You don't start the logic model on the left side. You start it on the right side by asking these questions. 
and see my implementation videos for more on this. When you're thinking about those outcomes and objectives, the things you want to do, see if you can put them in the language of SMART goals. Many educators are familiar with this model, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. So see my other videos on implementation where I challenged you to make improved relationships and increase trust your outcomes. You can measure these changes. I really believe that this is the heart of restorative justice and education. These are the things you should be looking to improve because you are looking to shift your school climate. And so there needs to be a focus on relationships. Let's talk a little now about different types of evaluation. We're not talking about the informal evaluation, which is something you do all the time. We're talking about the formal process where there's a design, you're collecting data, you're planning to use those results. Formative evaluation, also called process evaluation, is where you're looking at how things are going along the way. You're not looking at those long-term outcomes. It is more of a process to figure out if how you have planned to implement the initiative is happening as you've planned it. It is really appropriate to do this kind of evaluation and monitoring during your first one to three, maybe even one to four years of implementation. This is where you're gathering information to figure out what course adjustments you might need to make and what people's needs are. Readiness assessments are a tool for formative evaluation. Implementation fidelity is what we're talking about when we look at formative. How are you actually implementing restorative justice? Summative evaluation is where we do look at the outcomes. Did we achieve the outcomes or what outcomes did we achieve? Really, you want to hold off on doing this till about the fifth year of implementation. Because as I've talked about in my other videos already, there's a correlation between implementation fidelity and your reaching your outcomes. Let's take a look at this table. There's three types of evaluation that we're talking about here. A needs assessment, where we're identifying a problem or a need, process evaluation, and outcome evaluation. You can see depending on the type of evaluation, if it's formative or summative, we ask different questions. The work that I do with readiness assessments is in that summative column because you're asking yourself, do we do this or do we continue it? And the questions there are, should we begin? Is there sufficient need? And is there sufficient readiness? If we jump down to that middle column and look at process, we are looking at how is the program delivered? How's it going? Is more training needed? Is more staff needed? What do we need? Those are some of the questions. And on the outcome, we're asking what are the changes and the results? Let's look at a few things that we can evaluate. Readiness. This is your motivation for capacity and change. Definitely measurable. RJ training. Was the training effective? Did it meet the needs of the school? One of the things that I measure when I evaluate training is confidence levels. Again, you can refer to my book and you can see some of this, this information. But what's the point of training if at the end of spending all that money and time on training, people are still not confident to do certain things in their classroom, to use certain types of restorative practices? If they're not confident keeping a circle, they're very unlikely to keep circles in their classroom. And this is going to have a direct impact on implementation fidelity and achieving your goals and outcomes. This is very important information to gather about your training. Implementation fidelity. Who and who is not using restorative practices and why? To what degree are people using them? What are they using them for? There are all kinds of things that we can look at to determine implementation fidelity. And of course, at the end, after we've done implementation as well as we possibly can, we can look at our impacts. Are we achieving our intended outcomes? Here's some things you don't want to evaluate. If you don't have a clear design, evaluation questions, clear outcomes defined, you don't evaluate. This is why we talked about planning. You don't evaluate outcomes until you have fully implemented RJE. And don't bother evaluating if you don't plan to use the results. This is
So I'd like to come back to this notion of improved relationships and increased trust as two of your potential outcomes. One of the things that going through the logic model process should result in is what we call a theory of change. At its simplest, a theory of change is a statement that says, if we do X, we expect to get Y. So I'd like to show you a theory of change written out based on these outcomes. If we focus on improving relationships and increasing trust among all members of the school community by implementing restorative practices with fidelity, then we will also see decreased conflict, decreased suspensions, decreased referral, and increased student achievement. So this is a sound theory of change based on 30 years of research and evaluation on restorative justice in schools. Your theory of change should not be based on assumptions, wishes, and dreams. There should be some research and evaluation behind it. You need to be standing on solid ground with your theory of change. So now let's move into talking about evaluation and monitoring. What are some things that you can do to see if you're on your way to meet your goals? Circles are used for a lot of things and they can also be used in evaluation. My co-author Sherry DeLalo and I have just published an article on this and if you email me, I'd be happy to send it to you. Circles are a really integral part of restorative justice in schools, particularly in North America. I'm not so much a fan of counting circles, but I know that there are some school districts who do that. You do want to keep track of who's using circles in the classroom and for what purposes. Are people using it strictly for community building? Are there academic circles? Are there harm circles? Who's doing what? So it's a good idea to keep track of these things. It's a good idea to monitor if uh, the adults in the school are circling up, are parents circling up, who is using restorative processes. Another evaluation monitoring tool that you most likely already have are your annual school climate surveys. You'll want to look at them in a way that you can see progress and changes from year to year. Discipline data. It's great to start with baseline, know where you are now, and then look and see if and what is changing. Notice there's a theme of time in evaluation and monitoring because it's not a one-time thing. We're looking at three to five years to fully implement restorative justice in a school to make that paradigm shift from punitive to restorative. Do turnover rates lessen as the school becomes more restorative? Parental and community involvement, something else to monitor. These are all things that reflect change in your school. If you're going to track the number of repaired relationships, I also encourage you to get a little bit of detail on these so that we can talk about and share with our stakeholders the types of conflicts people are having, the types of harms, what it looks like when those relationships are repaired. Are they repaired permanently? Are there just less problems over time? What's happening here is these relationships are healed and transformed. Satisfaction with the process is very important. Marg Thorsburn talks about this. She writes that the first is an evaluation of whether or not the process was experienced as fair, whether people felt sufficiently heard and understood, whether the facilitation was experienced as competent, and whether the plan for reparation was considered appropriate. Thank you, Marg, for these words. Another thing to follow up with is if there is a harm reparation agreement, was it completed to everyone's satisfaction? These are important things to monitor. Thank you for watching this video. Thanks for considering what it takes to evaluate and monitor implementation. I am available to consult with schools about readiness, evaluation, and monitoring. Feel free to contact me at martha.rjconsulting.com. I wish you the best as you shift your schools from punitive to restorative.